Welcome everybody. So my name is Jennifer Mosby and I am a proud prisoner of Jesus Christ. So what are we talking about today, people? We talking about the narrow gate. Yes, we are. Matthew 7, 13 through 14 NIV. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it, y'all. ESV version puts it like this. Enter by the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. Mm. And those who enter by it are many for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. (laughs) This is why I want to talk about this, y'all, because sometimes, you know, we're presented with a hard season. We're presented with challenges. We're presented with difficulty. And we think that's a metric that we should quit. We say, okay. It ain't going so well. It ain't so easy. Maybe this ain't for me. See, our tendency is to want to run, to want to back out of it. Because if it's something I should be doing, everything should be coming together. Everything should be working well. There should be some ease to this thing. But that's not the case, y'all. You see, when you are experiencing hard times, when you're experiencing difficulty, you got to have a change of mindset. Because the word is telling us here that the road is difficult. The road is hard. So if you're feeling that way, do you know you're on the right path? Do you know that's the path that leads to life? I want you not just to be okay with it. I want you to rejoice. And here's why. Because I've read this scripture before many times. But, you know, there was one time when I read it and this is what stood out. Few find it. That means you could be doing everything that you can to try to get on the path. To the Lord. You could be trying. With everything that you have. And not find it. Because only few. Actually find it. Few. That's what the words say. So there's many. That don't find it. Oh the spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. So you found. The way to Jesus, because your life is hard, it's difficult, and only few are doing it, and you're living according to what Jesus is telling you to do, how he's telling you to live. You got to be happy about that thing. You got to rejoice. I mean, let's talk about few. That's like three. (laughs) There are billions of people in this world, the many people in this world. And there's only few that find it. You see, sometimes you could be looking at other people and their life could be seemingly so easy. It's so all put together. They have the freedom to do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it. Oh, they out there living la vida loca. They drinking, they partying, they clubbing, they having fun. They're out there making money, making big money. They're out there just saying whatever they want to say, however they want to say it with no restriction. No regard for your feelings (laughs) are the feelings of others. There's no consequences for the actions. They out here half naked or they dripping in these chains and all this stuff and you like, man. Must be nice, but I don't want you to envy those things. You can't. The people that have it easy, they're not to be envied. Because they're on the highway to hell. It's the path that leads to destruction. 
Yeah. Fall in love with the hard path. Fall in love with the difficult path because I know that's the way to Jesus. Yeah, if I'm about my father's business, if I'm showing up in my father's name, if I'm doing what I saw the Lord doing. I'm on the right track. I got to be thankful of that. How many of y'all been on the highway to hell? How many of y'all been on the path? To destruction and you was trying you was trying to do right you was trying to do good but you just could never you could never really make that shift you couldn't make that transition because something kept pulling you back oh but to be free to be on the right track to be on the right road y'all it's a blessing and it's confirmation it's confirmation that you on the right path to life. So we got to change our perspectives. On the hard. We got to change our perspectives. On the challenging. See there's an interesting dynamic that goes on with challenge. Because. We don't like it when we're knee deep in it. We don't like hard when we're knee deep in it. But there's something that's drawn to it and we know we need it. Yeah. See, you ever been in a season where you ain't been doing nothing, where you just lay flat? <laughs> you just a Netflix and chill season. You just ain't got no ambition. You just like, I don't feel like doing nothing. It's just And it just pulls you further and further into the abyss of nothingness, into the abyss of darkness. How'd that feel? <laughs> That feel like life to you? No. Right? You just dying a slow death on the couch or in the bed, wherever you at. See, it's not good for us. You got to be careful because that's a bottomless pit right there. Who's leading you there? Who's going to lead you to the highway to hell? It ain't the Holy Spirit. It's Satan. Yeah, he wants to kill, steal, destroy, devour, and he's lying to you, saying that that's all you're going to ever be. That's all you should do. That's all you need to do. You don't need to do nothing. So you just waste away on the bed. You waste away on the couch. What's there? Depression? Suicidal ideation? Boredom? Life is not there. So we understand we need to be challenged. We need to get up. We need to get moving. We don't want to be in situations that are comfortable because that landscape has already been explored. There's no curiosity. There's no discovery, y'all. There's no challenge of having to navigate unfamiliar territories. It's all figured out. No. See, we get bored that way. We want to be in the unknown, which is uncomfortable, which can be hard. But we want to be able to strategize and conquer new lands, new aspects of ourselves that we didn't know existed. And that's just what challenge is, right? Challenges going beyond those resources that are readily at the surface and having to do some digging, having to dig deep for what you didn't even know existed. See, you just going to work, you just digging, you digging. What do it feel like? Do you feel exhausted? You don't have the energy. You don't have the know-how. You don't know how to do a thing. Yeah. See, are you feeling like you don't have the time? You don't have the money. You don't have what it takes to do this thing. You just don't have it. You don't even feel like you have the intellect to be able to reason this thing through. Don't you know that's where God wants you, where you go beyond? 
the end of yourself. You don't reached it, the end of yourself, but yet you've decided to keep going because somehow, even though you've met the end of yourself, you know, there's more. That's what God wants to show you. He wants to show you the more. Yeah, partner with God so he could show you the more. So you got to start digging. You got to start doing the hard work. Why? So you can uncover all of those treasures that God placed within you. What did he place in you? Your identity, your true identity, who you actually are. All the spiritual giftings that he placed in you, all the skills you didn't even realize you have. But God's been building you up in them just little by little, like a little tool bag. You just been putting little tools. You didn't even realize you had a whole bag. God wants you to uncover all that because, see, the tendency is to want to take the path of least resistance. So you want to operate in comfort. You want to operate in a known. You want to operate in what's familiar. You never have to go into the tool bag because everything's right there out in plain sight for you. Now, God wants you to in the heart. So you have to start digging. So you have to start looking for those things within. See, most people don't like to do that because digging is hard work. <laughs> you ever have to dig? I did. I had to do digging. It's hard. Not only is it hard the first couple of days, but once when you start getting blisters and your body is sore and you tired and you got to go back out the next day and still go do digging, that's when it get real hard because you like, I, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I spent it all yesterday. I ain't got nothing for today. And God wants to show you, you do. Not by your power, not by my your might, but by my spirit. I want you to do these things. I need you to yield. <laughs> it's good. It's good now that you don't got to the end of yourself. Now I can show up strong in you. It's good that you don't got weak. Now whatever happens, you know it's not because of you. It's because of me and I get the glory cut for it. Do you know that God will continually place you in heart? Because that's where you grow. You see, God can make the hard easy and he can make the easy hard. Don't you understand that? Or he can keep the hard hard and keep the easy easy. To meet his desire, to meet his goal, to meet what he desires to have done. So you're desiring to seek out easy because you like, yeah, I'm done with this hard stuff. You don't gave up because for some reason you think hard. There's something wrong with that. You go to easy. Do you know God will get all up in the easy? You won't be able to think straight. <laughs> yeah, it was God who spent, sent that uh, tormenting spirit to Saul. It was God who created trouble for Jonah. Oh, you don't want to do what I say? Okay. I got something for that. I can show you better than I can tell you. Wait for it. <laughs> but see, easy is not the way because it's the highway to hell. And I'm really trying to get this into your whole being because it's so important easy is not the way hard is the way I want to tell you why it's your confirmation that it's the way John 16 33 tells us that we will have tribulation we will It says, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 15, 18 says, they will hate you because they hated me. Yet it will. Indeed, all who desire a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. We will have tribulation. People will hate us. We will be persecuted. That ain't easy. That's hard. Is that what's happening to you? 
Are people coming against you just because of the godly life that you're desiring to live? They got issues with you and all you did was show up. I ain't even said nothing. Why? Because the light that's in you is disturbing their demons that's within them. Yeah, them unclean spirits they got going on. They see the presence of Jesus and all of a sudden they get nervous. You got to stand in your authority. Yeah, what they hate you for no reason. You don't even understand why they hate you. I ain't done nothing but be nice to you. You don't cooked up a million schemes, a million stories about me (laughs) in your mind. I'm the worst person ever. I ain't done nothing but try my best to love you. And I needed all of God to do that. (laughs) But that's all I done. You still hate me. Ain't no winning. You ever say something simple to somebody? Good morning. And they like, oh, what's wrong? I hate mornings. You so happy in the morning. What you happy about? Ain't nothing be happy about. Get the smile off your face. You like, man. You need to go back to bed. You need to try, try this day over again. <laughs> but the Lord tells us we will have difficulty. We will have problems like expect it. See, you can want easy like the world. But do you know that friendship with the world is at enmity with Christ? No, I want to be a friend of Christ. I don't want to be. An enemy to him, the Lord calls me a friend. I want to live into that. <laughs> Lord, I don't want no hostility towards God. I'll be praying, God, work that out of me. You see? But this is where the devil wants you. He wants you seeking out easy. He wants you seeking it out. And the reason why he wants you seeking it out. Is because. He knows the path to him. Mm -hmm. The highway to hell. Y'all got to catch that. It's so good. It's so good. Why do you have an aversion to hard challenge? Like initially you want it, but then when you get knee deep in it, you pull out of it. Because the devil knows you're going to find treasure there. He just knows. He wants you on that path to easy. But there's this battle going on. There's this battle that's happening because the spirit is leading you to life. Which is a road that is narrow. It's restricted. Fewer on it. But the devil's leading you in a different direction. Let's talk about why we actually want hard. Again, we're trying to just reframe how we view hard and challenging. Romans 5, 3, 4 says we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Yeah. See, when we experience problems and trials, what does that do? That helps us learn to endure. It helps our character. It helps to build us up. It helps us with our hope. I'm telling you. It's in that heart. It's in that difficulty where we experience growth. Why you want it easy? Ain't no growth happening laying down in the bed, baby. Ain't no growth happening laying down on the couch. Ain't no growth happening when everything is easy and laid out in front of you. Don't be lured into that. It's hard. Let it be hard. It ain't going to kill you. They say what don't kill you make you stronger. They right. It's going to make you better. It's going to make you wiser. 
It's going to make you better equipped to be able to deal with what's coming after you, which is your adversary, the devil, who's on the prowl looking for who he can devour. Second Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 says, that's why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day for our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen for the things we will now see will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Do you see? This is why we don't give up. This is why we don't give up. We fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. How did Jesus get through on the cross? Because he could have jumped off at any moment. Right? Do you know? What does he tell us in the garden of Gethsemane? His father could have sent down angels and took care of that entire situation. But there was something he had to do. He had to give up his will and his desire for God. I know you may want easy. I know you may want it light. I know you may want things to all fall together and things to be all great and comfy and pillowy soft. It ain't about what you want. You got to deny yourself. You got to deny your wants and embrace the will of the father. And that's to be on this narrow road. That's hard to be on this narrow road. That's difficult. So when it gets hard, we don't say, oh, let's stop. It's too hard. We say, keep going. Keep going. Good job. Ain't that a different way to look at it? When you find yourself alone and unable to relate to other people. We delight in it. Because that means I'm on the road that the few are on. You see, I talked about this before in which, you know, I bring my difficulty to God, you know, and at my worst, at my worst, sometimes you just like, keep going, keep going. Like, why you don't want to sit with me and wallow in this? <laughs> why all that fear, doubt, confusion, weakness, I can't do it. All of that, that doubt that comes from the devil. Why well, I'm going to sit and talk to you about what the devil's telling you that you receive. No, y'all in agreement. I'm not. I need you to come into agreement with me. Keep going. Keep going. Just like I'm swerving around that conversation. I need you to swerve around that conversation. That Satan's given to you. So what do we got to do with this? We need to be able to get to the point where. We don't ask God for easy anymore. We don't ask God to take away the heart. We don't ask God. To make life. So free and to join the many. What do we ask God for? God, give me help, please, to endure this hard. God, give me strategy to endure the hard. God, strengthen me. Strengthen my very bones, God. 
to be able to get through this hardship. God help me to not want easy. God give me an aversion to easy. So you don't ask for Jesus to put you on the highway to hell and think he going to do it. <laughs> How many friends you want again? How many people you want to be surrounded with again? How many people do you want to be like again? How easy do you want it? You think Jesus going to give you that? <laughs> I tell you, he's not going to put you on the pathway to hell. He ain't going to put you on the path to destruction. The most beautiful thing about the garden is when he prays, not my will, but your will be done. He in the garden, y'all. He sweating blood because he's praying so fervently, right? He's in that thing. Oh, I tell you, he prays three times. <laughs> he going back and forth between his disciples. He like, can't y'all even stay up even an hour? Oh, but when he says, not my will, your will be done. God gives him the strength and the courage, y'all. To be able to stand. And when they come to him. He's like who is I? He, who is it y'all looking for? He says it is I. <laughs> they all fall down. They get back up. He says who is it that you looking for? It is I. <laughs> and he has the strength to endure. So it's a lesson for us to be able to. Grasp. And that's. Hard is not a reason for you to quit, to give up. Hard is something to lean into because I know God is in the heart and he's doing something with it. He's doing a great work in it. You see me, when I get to a point where it get too hard, I'd be like, yo, I don't want to do this. This ain't for me. Ain't nobody got time for this. But that's why I never can achieve this unimaginable thing that God has for me. That's why I can't see the things that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard and no mind can imagine, right? It's because when I get to a certain point, I'm done. So like in this season of my life, it's been like this past year. That I just really been digging, digging and leaning into the heart. God, this is uncomfortable. God, I don't like it. God, this ain't me. God, <laughs> we had to talk about this thing. Like, I don't even do this. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. I don't care how I feel about it. I'm going to just do it. I'm going to just do it. And I keep telling myself, the work don't care how you feel about it. It just want to get done. <laughs> You going into the gym, you crying, oh, I don't feel good. Oh, you know, I'm tired. The waist don't care about none of that. <laughs> gym don't care about none of that. You got to go in there and go put in work, no matter how you feel. And then afterward, when the work get done, that's just what it is. Go back and do it again tomorrow. And it don't care how you feel about it tomorrow either. <laughs> that's how it is when it comes to this life. Yeah, no matter how you feel about it, you live your life based on how you feel. You ain't never going to get nowhere because feelings are fickle. That's why you got to lean not on your own understanding. You got to lean into the hard. You got to do what you normally wouldn't do. See, God's trying to take you beyond what you know of yourself and he's trying to take you into the unknown. He's trying to get you to dig. He's trying to get you to press. He's trying to get you to move. Don't stay stuck in what's comfortable. Don't stay stuck in routine. Push yourself. Challenge yourself. Why? Because God is with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. 
See, they say practice makes perfect. And I heard someone say, no, practice makes progress. And that's what it is. I just keep going. I just keep doing it. I just keep moving. And I don't get pissed off and mad about the resistance and turn away. I welcome the resistance like I would welcome the resistance in the gym. I'm actually looking for it. If it's too easy, that means I'm not growing. I'm looking for it. I'm leaning into it. Where's the heart at? Let's go. I ain't got it, but my God do. And in this season, I need to see what my God can do through me. I already done seen what I could do. Check your resume, right? You got a good one. I got a nice one too. You real marketable. That's great. You don't did a few things. I'm proud of you. But let you be fully yielded and surrendered to God and lose your life to God and keep leaning in to what God has for you and stop backing out. Stop backing down. Stop turning away. Stop getting distracted and keep pushing. Keep moving. See what this great God can do with you. Woo. Let that be your 2024 and see where you end up this time next year, 2025. Yeah, that's the person I want to see. I don't want to see the person that quits and gives up and turns around and has options and just does something else and runs. I want to see the person that's living into that's like, God, I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't know what you're doing, but come on, let's do it. I'm with it. I'm here for it. Y'all, I'm living proof of that. And I'm going to tell you right now. Because the Lord has me and my life with him, my walk with him. It's on display for y'all. So y'all could just see what is. I got ready to do this uh, lesson here and I was like, God, I don't want to do it. I ain't going to lie. I recorded this video about three times. I stop five minutes in, 10 minutes in, 12 minutes in. I'm like, I don't got it. I don't got it. I don't want to do this video. I was feeling real nervous. I was feeling real fearful. I don't know why. I'm just like thinking about stuff that don't matter. Thinking about how it looked. Thinking about how it would come off. I'm like, I really don't got it. Like it's four pages over here that I'm looking at. Y'all. <laughs> I'm like, and the way I was put together, I'm like, oh, oh, no, I don't really have it. And I just got it this morning. It's a lesson I did a while back, but I hadn't looked at it. So it was a lesson that I just saw right now. And I'm like, God, like, I don't have this in my soul right now. I can't, <laughs> I ain't like actually took the time to like sit with it or anything. So I didn't want to do it. I was nervous. I was stumbling over my words. I couldn't get my thoughts together. And God was like, just do it one more time. So I could have just said, you know, it's too early for this. <laughs> I got to go to church. But I said, no, I'm leaning in. You know, all right, it's too hard for me. It ain't too hard for God. Let's go. And then look, here I am. I'm done. Like whatever God has you in right now, just keep going. Just keep doing it. Stop backing out. Stop finding another way. Just listen to God and hear from God and just go with him. If God's calling you to this thing, he's in that thing. Trust God in it. Do you know that's where he wants you? See, you got to get that. You got to get that. It's where God wants you in this space. Where you're uncomfortable, where you don't know, where you ain't got it. And he's like, well, if you just stick with it, I could show you you do. Why are you paying attention to your own thoughts, your own reasoning, your own understanding? I created you. Let me tell you how I created you. Let me tell you how I formed you. I formed you to be able to withstand that. I formed you so that you could do that. Every cell in your body is formed to be able to do that thing. I don't called you to do. Do it. You don't know, but I do. So you got to trust me. 
See you trusting on what you've seen of yourself, on what you've seen in the world. And you don't understand. Behold, I do a new thing. I created you to do a new thing. Lay hold of the new thing I got for you. But see, new is hard. New is challenging because it's unfamiliar. We like the new thing to the new car smell wear off and it start getting hard. Then we like, oh, wait a minute. I want the old thing back. <laughs> God like, yeah, the devil wants you there too because you ain't going to grow. Y'all, those people that have it easy. Go check their temperature. Go talk to them. They at the same place they've been at five years ago. Check their thought process. <laughs> check how they move. Check how they live in. Check what's going on in their life. It ain't changed. <laughs> they think it has. It ain't. It's just the same thing over and over. I ain't heard nothing new. Ain't nothing new under the sun. <laughs> because they comfortable. They ain't easy. They only challenge themselves so far. You see when the great I am. That I am challenge you. Oh baby. <laughs> Look. Now I'm flowing. <laughs> and it's exactly where God wanted me. I ain't looked at this paper in so long. <laughs> It's a lesson for me and it's a lesson for everybody else. And I ain't got nothing to prove. I ain't going to sit up here and be like, oh, yeah, this was woo wee. This is just easy. Nah. 42 years old. <laughs> this joke ain't no joke. But I submitted and I surrendered to God and it got done. And I praise God for it. I praise God for helping me to get through it, for giving me the strength to be able to just do those things that even sometimes I feel like I'm unqualified for. Well, I hope you were blessed by this. I hope you got something out of it. If nothing else, embrace the heart, baby. It's where God wants you. It's where you want to be. You know it. Just embrace it. And discover a new version of you. So I pray that your needs are met according to... God's riches and glory. I pray that he fulfills your desires. Of your heart. I pray you lose yourself in Jesus. Y'all. Talk soon. <laughs>